Hey guys, just wanted to drop this reminder that my Kickstarter is dropping tomorrow. So go check out the link down below to get a notification for as soon as it goes live. It will probably be sometime in the morning on the 19th. So make sure to go check it out at the link below for the Art Supply Mimic Enamel Pins. All right, into the video. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin, and today we are continuing the Monsters in Moments sketchbook. So by the time this video comes out, I have already shipped off this book. It is on its way to the Brooklyn Art Library, where it's going to be digitized and posted on their online website. Along with, it's going to potentially travel in their like traveling little library car. I don't know how that's gonna work with the current world situation, but I sent it in in time, so hopefully it's with the truck whenever it does its thing, when whenever that happens. Hey guys. <laughs> this is editing, Caitlin, so you get Mike in shot. Uh, long story short, I did not get the book off in time. Yep, these last couple months have been, uh, whoo, a little rough. <laughs> So anyway, I thought I'd come to you super casual with a uh, great bedhead um, and just be totally frank that I did not finish the book in time. I'm doing the last four drawings this weekend, so it will probably not make it on the truck if they're still doing that or whatever, and it should be digitized eventually. But as of right now, recording this right before this episode comes out, I have not finished the book. <laughs> So yeah, I thought I'd be honest, It's it's been a month and uh, it was very hard to record it. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode and yeah, either way, I'm planning on getting this sent out before this, before or right after this video goes live. So the book will be gone, but it's not on time for their due date. So anyway, enjoy, just wanted to be honest, enjoy the video. Either way, we have a couple pages left in this to finish. We actually have eight to be precise. So this episode, we're going to be doing four drawings and the next episode, we'll be doing another four drawings. You guys are welcome to share other monsters and moments ideas in the comments. They won't make it in this sketchbook, but I've had a lot of good feedback of this series. So I might continue this as just like another sketchbook prompt to fill another sketchbook of mine. But either way, let's go ahead and check which prompt we're going to be doing today. So first off from over on Discord, uh, Mike the Knife said, Hades taking Cerberus to the vet to get shots. I love this idea. I think that's such a cute concept. So that's the one we're gonna start with. Okay, so let's get to the page. At least kind of what I'm thinking is maybe this could be a little reminiscent of the Disney Hades. Um, I have an idea of it, them maybe sitting in the waiting room Ooh, okay, I have an idea. So when I go to the vet and I take my dogs, um, Coda really hates it. Elsa doesn't like it either, but Coda really dislikes it. So I think it'd be really cute if uh, the Cerberus was hiding under uh, the chair. <laughs> That's what Coda tends to do when we go to the vet. He just kind of gets under the chair and just camps out under there until our appointment. So I think it'd be really cute to show the Cerberus just hiding under the chair, not wanting to get his shots. Now for Caitlin to figure out how to draw chairs. <laughs> Cause I do not draw them very often. So yes. <laughs> I kind of imagine this Hades, basically it's like the puppy version of Cerberus um, where He's just such a young, energetic pup and uh, probably is like really exhausting Hades right now. So I kind of imagine Hades just kind of slumping in the chair a little bit. And then usually what I do when Coda is kind of cowering and whimpering under the chair a bit, I tend to at least try to pet him to calm him down. Doesn't always work, but I think it at least gives some little maybe a little bit of comfort. So I'll have Hades kind of petting one of the heads, kind of like the other, the idea of one of them just kind of smooshing through between there. 
and then one more could be right here. And then I think they would have to be wearing a harness for sure. <laughs> because if you were to put a leash and a collar on Cerberus, would all three of them connect to each neck? How would that work? <laughs> or would it be more of uh, one of them is the primary one that gets the leash and the other ones don't? I don't know. I don't know how that would work. And then I'm thinking, if I remember correctly, Hades from, like, let's say, Hercules, the Disney movie, his whole head was flame, and he kind of had, like, high widow peaks. I kind of want this, since this is such a small little baby Cerberus. What if this is, like, young Hades? Like, when he first gets the dog. So maybe he has more of, like, a mohawk flame thing going on. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> Of course, it's a modern one. We're not going to do, like, all of these have been pretty modern clothing because it's all just current people type of feeling. Um, so I won't put them in, like, robes, but maybe, oh, maybe, like, the to mimic Greek robes in a way, we could do a v-neck but with, like, a scarf. Yeah, I like that idea. Oh, another way we can kind of mimic kind of the... Greek or Roman look, maybe we could give Hades some sandals. I don't think I've put anyone in sandals yet in this. Perfect. <laughs> okay, I'm liking where Hades is going. I'll finish off his face real quick, and then it's time to more delve into those little puppy faces. <laughs> For sure I'm going to make it look like Hades is not getting enough sleep because I remember when we first got Coda and they're like a newborn baby. Like dogs as puppies will keep you up all night sometimes. Like some, I know a couple friends who got lucky and just got the nicest little things that were just perfect little sweethearts right away. <laughs> nope. My husband and I sometimes had to get up at three in the morning and walk our dog or take him to the park just cause he was just so hyper. Especially when he hit, like, I'm going to call it his terrible twos. No matter what we did, he just was, like, going nuts and had to, like, run around. Like, we would take him on long walks every day when we would get home, and he still would go crazy. It was, ugh, we did not get a lot of sleep back then. All right, I think these pooches are looking real cute. I like this one a lot. I think I'm going to mess with this hand just a little bit more. Like, maybe we'll put it kind of more on the side. Like this. I like that a lot more. Um, but I, I really like how this one's looking. So I think from here I'm going to jump in. We're going to do the line art and the color. And then we'll be done with this one. So I will see you guys in another minute. Right, so our Hades is all done. I think this one's super cute. It, he totally looks like a like sleep deprived puppy owner. I see on the camera. I don't know if this is gonna be um, as much in post, but the blue is not showing up very well on my camera. But 
I did make it like a lightish blue with a little bit of white here and then it goes into this darker blue. And then I tried to make some type of cool pattern that literally from memory of something that I remember from the Hercules movie. But either way, I think this is pretty cute. It was really fun drawing a very little baby Cerberus. Um, but that's the first one. So uh, let's get ready to draw the second prompt. All right, next up, I'm thinking from Sween Bean, uh, a cockatrice working as a Starbucks waiter. I'm really excited. I don't think, yeah, I haven't really drawn a coffee person. Um, I actually worked as a barista cafe worker for some of my time in high school and I really liked it. Um, so I'm excited to add a barista of some sort in this book. Also, I do have to say a cockatrice is a very interesting creature to pick for this in particular, um, just cause it's like a really long necked chicken dragon type of thing. So it's gonna be interesting uh, making this into a barista. I'm kind of thinking for this one, I wanna make this character kind of sassy looking. Um, like maybe they're having a really hard day where they had that one a uh, customer that's like, I want a black Americano with eight pumps of vanilla, three extra shots. Um, make sure the milk is steamed at, well, wait, Americanos don't have milk. Then there, I, that's how it'd be. Um, I want an Americano with steamed milk that's steamed at exactly um, like a hundred and it needs to have this much foam. <laughs> and uh, I want the extra shots, a bunch of pumps of vanilla and uh, can you make it low fat? <laughs> Which is fine. I mean, everyone can have their own coffee choices. I have no place to judge because I know I, I have my certain coffees that I like, but you know, there's sometimes those days where uh, you're just like, oh my God, another custom order just kill me. <laughs> so I'm thinking this one is kind of ready to write a name on a cup. Uh, and just kind of looks like they're over their day, I guess. I think that'd be kind of funny. And then I was thinking to myself, oh, we'll need to think of a different logo, but the uh, Starbucks logo is already a mermaid. So we can just kind of generally put a mermaid there. It already works. <laughs> and I know typically cockatrice have like wings for arms, just like, you know, chicken there, they have their wings. Um, so maybe it's kind of like folded wings that might make it a little difficult to be a waiter, but you know, this is, this is, uh, this is a mythical world. Who knows? They probably developed a way that makes it easier for all types of creatures to make coffee for a living. <laughs> or we could also go under the idea that over time and evolution and maybe these creatures changing and not needing to be what they were before. <laughs> the wings on the cockatrice have gotten a little bit smaller. <laughs> we can also go with that, that theory. Okay, so I know at Starbucks, I've seen some employees that wear like a visor and I think that's gonna work really well with the cockatrice idea because this thing will for sure have some type of plumage on top to match a, uh, a chicken or a rooster, I guess. And then we, of course, would have some like spines going down the back. Some really crazy spines. Kind of reminds me of like if the employee had like a mohawk or something, that'd be pretty dope. Well, I really like how this guy is looking. He, I'm gonna give him a little bit more of a sarcastic, like tired look. Like maybe I raised the eyebrow a little bit. No, that looks sad. <laughs> gotta, gotta figure out how to give it tired, sarcastic eyes. There we go. That feels better. Those look like tired, sarcastic eyes. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm feeling at a pretty good place with this guy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump in. We're going to do some line work and color, and then we'll be done with our uh, cockatrice barista. Oh my gosh. I love him. All right. I'll see you guys in a bit.
We are all done with our barista, I think. This guy looks super cute. I really love this design. It's just so fun. It, it totally looks like, oh my God, I'm over my day. Too many orders, too many custom orders. I'm exhausted. <laughs> all right, next up from MJ Pete 27 I loved this idea of, I had a thought about this series and I think you might consider a dryad or wood nymph pruning a tree or planting something. I think this would be really cute. Um, I have kind of an idea of how to do this, maybe a cute little potted plant or something, but uh, let's get in and start planning this out. All right, so I'm thinking maybe we have the character kind of holding up a potted plant, like taking a look at it, examining it, <laughs> and maybe they're going to plant it in a, uh, another pot like right next to them like kind of like a indoor plant mom type of thing i know um with the pandemic happening and everything um myself and a few other people i know have been slowly becoming more and more like plant moms <laughs> i actually recently bought um kind of a little garden set up for myself um i got some herbs and a little pepper plant and planted them inside um, and I, I really love having them around. It's a nice little pop of green and then I can actually like use them in my cooking if I can actually keep them alive. So I'm going to try really hard to not kill my plants, but, uh, I've been slowly taking care of a couple other plants. Like I have a snake plant and some other little succulents and a rose bush outside. And uh, I'm trying to think what else, um, an aloe vera plant. Try and decide what plant she'll replant. Like maybe a cute little succulent might be something fun. Yeah, I think we'll do like maybe a succulent for this one. It'd be kind of fun to show maybe another row of plants. Like she has her windowsill at home. Has a couple of cute little plants on it. I've been slowly trying to get my garden going. Just ever so slowly. It is not easy for me to uh, get this garden started because I don't... I don't really have like a natural green thumb. I think I've slowly learned how to take better care of plants, but like, I don't know. I'm still not great at it. <laughs> I think I'll give her a cute little sun hat or something. I think that'll be really adorable. I think this is looking pretty dang cute. She's just like hanging out in her tank top, going through and checking on all her little plant babies. I love it. I wish I could have such a green thumb like this. But uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and go through and start doing the line art for this one. We'll add like a little window back here. Something like that would be really cute. I know I at first I was like, maybe we could do some outdoor gardening, but I'm liking this idea of having more of an indoor garden setup. So I'm gonna go through, let's do some line art and some color, and then we'll be done with this one.
right, here we go. We have our second to last design done. I had a lot of fun with this character. It's really fun doing like a dryad like character. And I thought it'd be really cool to add some vitiligo to this character design because I thought with like trees and like how moss grows on barks and trees, like it would be really interesting to have kind of like that vitiligo, but with like greens instead. And I thought that looked really cool and interesting for this character design. All right, and the last one for today, I think we're gonna go ahead and go with Bailey Werner's suggestion of, I'd love for you to draw a Wendigo going camping. I think that'd be really fun. And I have a good friend of mine that goes backpacking all the time. So I think I'm gonna combo it with uh, backpacking and camping. So let's go ahead and jump in and get that sketch started. All right, so what I'm thinking is we could have our Wendigo maybe after a very long backpacking hike is now hanging out uh, with like a fire going and getting some uh, some food onto the fire, resting up for another long hiking journey for tomorrow. It'd be kind of fun if there was like another companion in this one. So maybe, I'm trying to think, maybe we could put another character here. I'm trying to think what other character could go backpacking with this Wendigo. I mean, we could do another, another Wendigo, but maybe like, another like a halfling or something. Oh, maybe a jackalope. I think a jackalope, like a jackalope humanoid would be really fun for like a backpacking companion. And it just feels so right with the Wendigo. So yeah, we'll have like a little jackalope human, or humanoid as the backpacking companion. Got a nice little fire going on in the middle right there. Maybe they'd have like a little grate that would go on top like a little pan. Ooh, it'd be really cute. So we got the pan, right? And then maybe it has like a little fish in it. But then there's like a stick here with maybe like a, <laughs> I know I'm going into the stereotypes for the rabbit, but like a little carrot would be really cute. And another little carrot. <laughs> I think that'd be pretty cute to be next to the fire. I could see the Wendigo maybe holding like a little protein bar, <laughs> like while they wait for their food to cook. Gotta get some, gotta get some energy in <laughs> while we wait for the bigger fish to fry, literally. <laughs> I'm thinking for a little bit of story for these two. I think it'd be really fun if they were like roommates <laughs> and they do like a yearly trip where they go like out into nature and go backpacking, you know, kind of go back to their roots. <laughs> Cause I mean, I feel the Wendigo and the Jackalope are very much uh, out in nature type of uh, creatures. I mean, I think most mythical creatures are probably more like that, but they just feel very much like probably at home in like the forest. So these two make sure to uh, get out of the city uh, at least once a year on a little road trip and go backpacking to be out in nature again. I think that'd be really fun. I think these two just have such a fun disposition. I think it's just so, I, I'm really glad that I thought of the Jackalope because I feel it just fits so well with the Wendigo. Cause I mean, they both kind of have like uh, deer vibes going on for them with their horns and everything. Or I guess, I mean, the Jackalope is an antelope, but you know what I mean. They just feel like they'd be perfect buds. Like this big giant Wendigo and this little tiny jackalope are like the best of buds. I just, I love the disposition of like a small character and a large character. I think it's just one of my favorite things to do. Got a little nice tent set up there. We got our little carrots on the fire and our little fish. I think this is looking super cute. I think I'll go ahead and start doing some line art and color from here. I'm feeling pretty good about this one. I just, oh, I love how cute they are. Just the little friends out on a, out on a nature walk. Well, I mean, a long, long-term long nature walk, like a backpacking trip, you know what I mean, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and jump in. Let's get some line art going and some color and we'll be done with this dynamic duo. Oh, I just love them so much. So I'll see you guys in just a minute.
right, there we have it. The final piece for today's Monsters and Moments. I love this one. I just, I think they're so fun. Just the cute disposition of the two of the characters. And then they're just over a nice little campfire with some snacks after some camping and backpacking. Oh, I just love this one. And today was really fun. I think we made a lot of really cool Monsters and Moments. This was really awesome. I, I had a blast making these. If you guys try making your own of these, I'd love to see them. If you post them on Twitter or Instagram, tag me, let me know that you made your own like monsters and moments. I'd love to see them. I'm having a ton of fun making these and we only have about four left for this sketchbook. And then I think I'll continue these afterwards cause I'm just, I'm just having too much fun with these cute little monsters. But either way, if you guys like this video, like some monsters and such, I'd love to hit that subscribe button, join our little community, and hit the like button as well if you like these monsters and moments videos. But either way, again, thank you guys so much for stopping by, and I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody. I'd like to take a second to thank all my wonderful patrons over on Patreon. You guys are all amazing. If you guys would like to check out my Patreon, I just rolled out a bunch of new tiers, including a uh, poster and sticker club for every month and sketch postcards. Go check it out at patreon.com forward slash kmckeg. But anyway, thank you guys again, and I'll see you all next time.